Hi there. It's March the 20th and we're continuing today our journey through the Torah and we are in Numbers still, in Hebrew Bamidbar, meaning in the desert, and uh, we've come to chapters 30 and 31. Chapter 30 of Numbers is concerning vows made to the Lord. Vows are considered very binding, very, uh, where well, you couldn't break a vow before a vow made before the Lord stood. However, in Numbers 30, there are circumstances under which vows can be rescinded, particularly, specifically, the vows of married women or daughters who are dependent on their husbands or fathers. In other words, a man has the right in his household to uh, negate vows which may bring um, uh, dishonour or may bring misfortune on his household. To us, of course, in these days of gender equality, it seems very strange to have done this. But it's really about the protection of those who may be taking things on themselves that couldn't be, uh, that couldn't be undone. It's interesting that on the Day of Atonement every year, the main prayer in the Hebrew liturgy begins with the cry or the chant of Kol Nidre, which means all vows. And it's actually a prayer, or it's actually a statement, saying that all vows which are made from now until next Day of Atonement are null and void. And this is basically, uh, Re um, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs suggests that this is basically because people were being forced to make vows, particularly in the medieval period as Jews, to enforce them to become Christians, and therefore it was asking God to release them from vows that they made uh, which were forced on them. So vows are very important things in the Jewish understanding. And therefore here are the, the ways in which people can be released from vows uh, if they are bearing upon them. Chapter 31 of Numbers is a very strange chapter to us, very difficult to understand and grapple with, but it, nonetheless it is there. It describes the war against the Midianites. It says Midianites in the scriptures, although it obviously has something to do with the story of Baal Paor a few chapters earlier when the women enticed the men of Israel um, to commit idolatry and to, to sleep with them in sexual uh, festivities. And uh, this is the avenging of that of that situation. We can see that because although the 12,000 war men, the 12,000 soldiers of Israel go against Midian and really destroy much of their, um, their, their nation, they bring back women and children into the camp of Israel. And this is a thing that's very difficult to, to, to grapple with. In their coming back, uh, Moses is angry that they brought back the very women, it seems, who were likely to lead the men of Israel astray into idolatry. And so they actually have those killed, as well as the male children who, who are likely to carry on the line of the Midianites. But they keep the virgins, they keep the young girls for themselves. And then they uh, divide up the spoils. The spoils become forfeit to the Lord, many of them, and there's a, a, an offering made. And what's also interesting is that the people who've gone out to war, the men who've gone out to war, are unclean. They're ceremonially unclean before the Lord, and they have to be outside the camp for seven days before they come back in. This is something which Jesus obviously um, mitigates, and Jesus teaches us that we don't use the sword. We don't take up uh, violence against others uh, anymore. Um, the, the principle of Jesus is a principle of love. These scriptures are there to show just how um, key is holiness before God. And while we haven't got to fear or worry about violence being implicated anymore, uh, we can see the holiness of God and the demand of being completely separated to him and not taken into any form of idolatry. Have a good March the 20th.